Can't wait to see what's in store for me this week. Let's take a look. Hi, we're, we're the Shroggy family. family. I'm Kyle. I'm Christy. And we have three daughters. Ellie, who is 10. Hi! <laughs> Emma, who is six. <laughs> and Kara, who is four. <laughs> I work for a sales office in Nashville, Tennessee. Hi. I am a stay-at-home mom. They're just wild. They don't listen. You get down. You know better. No, I'm just Stop it. Our children have gotten to the point where they control Christy. Yeah! No! Yeah! Well, these kids can just obviously do what they want to do. I mean, you know, there's no discipline in this house, is there? The entire wall system in our upstairs has an assortment of wonderful, beautiful crayons and markers and pencil marks. It's lack of respect. There is no way I would allow this. Are you kidding me? Look at the graffiti on the walls. Kara got the passy. Kara is four years old and she still has a passy. My bubble passy! Oh, this is a joke. That passy's got to go. <laughs> she has an addiction. Be ready for bed. Oh. When nighttime comes and it's time for bed, they will not go upstairs and go sleep in their beds. Is anybody else tired? Children go to bed when they want to go to bed, or when Christy is ready to go to bed, we will force one or two of them in there. Ah. It has been eight years since we've been in the same bed. Oh, going to sleep. They don't even sleep together, Mom and Dad. Look. You go in there. There is no way that this family can be getting a proper night's sleep. This has got to change. It can't go on like this any longer. I mean, I can't go on like this any longer. I just feel like we have to fix it right now. <laughs> Super Nanny, come on, we need, we your, need help. your help. Can you put your foot on it, driver, please? We better get there quick. I'm Joe. I'm Christy. Hi. <laughs> when Joe knocked on the door, it was only the girls and I at home. Kyle was still at work. And I was really quite nervous. The mom was very shy when I first met her, but she did introduce me to her daughters. <laughs> this is Kara. She's four. This is Kara. Hi, Kara. And this is your sister. Hi, pleased to meet you. I'm Joe. But she asked me if I'd like to look around the house, and I was curious to do so. Oh, great. I see the kids did the interior design. Yes, they did. And I saw, well, let's face it, graffiti. What have we got here? Oh. That's Ellie's name, but this is not her room. <laughs> there was uh, lots of colourful artwork that had just been scribbled, and it was on the carpets as well. So they, they've done it. Do they have permission to do it? I've got to ask. They don't have permission. They do it when I'm not looking. Do you reinforce any form of discipline at all with the girls? Well, yeah, but they still do it. So this lady had clearly allowed her children to do this to the walls of their bedroom without consent. After seeing all the artwork, I was introduced to Mima. Is your space respected? Uh, Sometimes and sometimes not. Mima is Christy's mother, and she lives with them. So this is like your little annex area. This is your <laughs> this is your little space here. I'm very grateful that I have the opportunity to be that close to my grandchildren, but sometimes you can be a little too close. Mima doesn't have any privacy. The kids just cross those boundaries and go into her space. Going in my grandma's. <laughs> I think Mima would like the kids to respect her privacy, to knock on the door before they go in. No, 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 you don't go in here and just mess up my stuff. They will even lay down on the ground and kick at the door if Mima doesn't let them in. Someone missing a patty. Who's is this? This belongs to you. Kara's main issue is probably the pacifier. Her whole mouth is starting to look funny because of it. Her teeth are sticking way out. Oh. Huh. Are you too big for so, a passy? So how many of these do you have? A lot. I 
green one, a blue one, a red and uh -huh. yellow one, two blue and red ones. Hey, or have you ever oh, made attempts to, to dispose of the pacifier? With the other two, when we took it away, they stopped crying like after one night they were fine. Right. And she not didn't bottom, stop. She just kept on and on and on. Yeah. It's, it's my fault. I, I weakened to give it back to her so we could get some sleep. Right. Mum's right. Four years old and using a pacifier is way too old. So it looks like we'll have to put a stop to that. It shows Mum unable to complete any task and to follow through. I'd just gotten really good at just kind of getting up every day and living and not feeling anything, and then the same thing happening the next day. I think I have been detached. To see Mum reading while the kids were outside bored and restless was sad. It was very obvious that Mum was stuck in a bad rut. What, what do you kind of do around this time? I usually just pick up, at, pick up after them <laughs> or do laundry or... Um... She's unsure, unconfident, unenthusiastic about motherhood. A little bit vague, kind of not really there. Mum's very detached and it made me want to sit down and talk to her about it. Come and sit down with me and see if the cause wasn't the sleep deprivation that she had mentioned in submission. So what has been the effect of lack of sleep? It's exhausted. And it comes down to being like the wife and the mother and the, the anything that requires an organizational fit into a little mold thing, I'm not, I'm not good. And it just, it, it just makes life really hard for me. I just like, I'm constantly treading water or something. I, that's the way I feel. I, I don't I always have a fear of um, disappointing people. Because you want people to like you. Yes. What other things make you fearful? Like heights make me a bit queasy. Yeah, I have that one. You have that one. <laughs> that makes me feel a bit queasy. Fear has become a comfort for Christy. It's a false security. It stopped her from moving forward and empowering herself to really make some really good changes. Hi, hey girls. Hi. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you, Joe. I'm Kyle. Nice Hi, to meet Kyle. you. Once Dad came home, they all had dinner, and then the kids started to get ready for bedtime, which was interesting, to say the least. Here, come on. Pajama time. Pajamas on. So, pajamas on is literally the beginning of bedtime. Is that yes, correct? Yes, that's correct. Right. Ellie, go get your pajamas. I have to lay down between Ellie and Emma to get them to go to sleep. Are you going to sleep? Am I saying good night to you now? Okay, well, good night then. Good night. <laughs> good night. Good night. <laughs> I tell you what, this is a first. I've never had to tuck in a family that I was visiting on my observation day. That was a first for everything. Good night. I mean, I've never been into a household where I've switched the lights out on a parent tucked in cosy with her daughters. I found that absolutely bizarre. So no, no evening together, no. With the children being in the bed, uh, my wife and I don't get any time, couples time, uh, not only just to talk, but just to sleep together, to be with one another. Um, it's, it's amazing we have three children. I don't know how it happened, but it, it did. I've got to ask you this question. I have to. When was the last time you slept in your own bed? It's probably been about seven to eight years. Seven, eight years? Yeah. That's just madness to me. Absolutely insane. How did you have children? Did you meet on the way to the bathroom? Uh, but, but <laughs> Funny you should say that. I sit out on the couch with this, the four-year-old Kara and watch a movie until she falls asleep or we both fall asleep. Uh, and then anywhere from 11 o'clock to two in the morning, I move the 10-year-old Ellie upstairs into a bed, move the four-year-old Kara into Christy's bed, and I go upstairs and sleep in a separate bed. So believe it or not, this is where dad will end up tonight. I mean, how crazy is that? 
Seriously, it's like musical beds. Dad hasn't slept in his own bed properly for eight years. I'm surprised they're still together, to be honest with you. It was embarrassing and with her looking right in your eyes in unbelief that I have to go into a bed without my wife by myself and roll over and go to sleep. Tomorrow morning, need a meeting. Okay. Stuff that needs to be addressed and spoken about, okay? Okay. Yeah, all right Thank then, you. great. Good night. Um, hey, go upstairs, I'll see myself out. Okay. okay. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Really, the lack of respect for the house with regards to the children graffitiing all over the walls. It's even worse than that because they wouldn't even consider doing that at somebody else's house. It's just here. They know they just don't respect their home. But, but let's talk about something wider than that as well. If there's no discipline in the house, then you're not putting in place rules, boundaries and consequence. So how are you teaching fundamentally those values that you want to instill? We don't. Correct. Then how are you doing your job as a parent? We're not. A carer with a passy at her age has gone beyond the use of why we would use passies. And it's got to go. She's not a baby. Oh, I know it, I know it has to go. But it means that you've got to find the strength to recognise and an understanding of why it has to go because allowing her to become more mature and to be the age that she is leaves the fear of you possibly not getting what you get from her emotionally and physically because you need that because it's absent in your relationship. Correct? Bedtimes are always interesting. I'll tell you what though, it's the first time I've ever had to shut the light down and say goodnight to a parent on my first night of observing a family. Couldn't believe what I was seeing. That's crazy. I I've got to ask, you know, what are you thinking? I think we're just too tired to, to fight. So it's easier to just let them go where they want and then adapt around them. The fact that you have both not had a good night's sleep in, well, I can't say days, let's say years, <clears throat> has manifested itself into so much negativity. And sleep deprivation will take a toll on you physically, and then it will break you down mentally, and then it will have you go, stop. They're already there. Christy, there's no fun in the house. Where's the fun? The lethargicness, not wanting to be enthusiastic about parenthood. This is all really about you. So how do you encourage and be a positive role model as a woman for three females in your house? Not doing a real good job at all. <clears throat> Fear's got you good. It's got you right there, sold. So between the three of us, we are going to make change. In the home. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. We in? Mm -hmm. We in? Yes. All right, let's do this because we haven't got time to waste here. We need to change things drastically. OK. Thank you. For my first day of teaching, I wanted to knock this family completely out of their comfort zone and start off with a bang. Hi. Hi. So I addressed as many of their issues as I could. I started off by setting up a really strict routine for this family to follow. It will allow you to parent successfully every day and ultimately feel in control. I need to learn how to organize and I need to learn how to make things better for me. And this routine will be good for the whole family. All right, so I'm lo really looking forward to starting with this routine. I followed that up by having Mimo make up signs for her door. These are my new door stands. So that her space could be respected. What does that say? Now, now. Which means what? You can come in. Then you can come in. Uh, but if I am doing things that I want to be by myself, then I say... Later. Later. And for the grand finale, I wanted to challenge Mum's fear of heights. I'm very scared of heights. Because I knew that if she could get over that, then the fear of displeasing her children wouldn't be so bad after all. I thought, oh, no. 
I'm gonna have to jump off that thing. I was just feeling like, I'm scared of heights and I don't wanna do this. She could have turned around and said to me, well, what about you then? So I, I wanted to show her that I was willing to grow as well and face my own fears of heights. So are you ready? Mm, yeah, it's ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> One, two, three, go. Joe wanted me to know that I could conquer the fear of my life and parenting. The zipline showed me that I can do it. Yes! Christy did it, and she was really pleased with herself that she came down from that tower. So now it shouldn't be so bad for having the courage to discipline the children, right? You did good too. <laughs> After mum's blood was pumping from coming down from that zip line, I could see that she was very proud of herself. So now it's time to start establishing some house rules. And I'm gonna do something really unique here because what I'm going to do is give the parents one set of house rules and grandma another. No mm. rules, no boundaries in this house, therefore no control. So now what we're going to do is to establish house rules. We're also going to establish rules for Mimo's space. We all sat down at the table and wrote out a list of ha house rules. No hurting each other. OK. Respect. I think it's very helpful because if the kids act up, you can go straight to that rules board and say, this is what you're doing wrong, and this is why you're getting in trouble. So your Mimo's rules are an extension of the house rules. So there will be things here that you'll look and say, yes, I certainly want those in my space too. I have a respect for my apartment. I see it. Sing it, Mimo. Exactly. I think the rules will work very well. No, I call it fighting. Great, you put it there. If that's what you call it, you, you write it down. Mimo will have her rules to go in her apartment so that she's very much a part of the family and the third adult, and the kids will respect her rules too. Right, so I'll get you to pull the kids in and uh, okay. let's go through the house rules. All right. After we set up the rules, we had the kids come in so the parents could explain to them absolutely clearly what was going to change. Sleep and stay in your own bed. And as from tomorrow, we will be doing that. Okay. Okay, that's sleep and stay in the bed. Any opportunity I get to have mum really explain to the kids that she expects certain behaviour from them brings her one step closer to showing these kids she's their mother first. Listen and do as you are told. We'll explain what we want you to do, and then you do it. OK, so we'll go through Mimo's rules. Respect privacy and don't bother my things. Mimo was spot on. She explained very clearly her rules and what she expected. She did a great job. OK, so let's put the rules up. Now we've established the rules, it's important to bring in discipline. So if these kids misbehave, they'll know exactly what to expect. If these rules are broken, there are going to be consequences, OK? You're going to end up doing timeouts. So this is how it works. You give the kids a warning. You will make a very conscious effort of coming down to their level. Low tone voice, because you're not happy. You're exercising your authority, but only verbally. Mm -hmm. If they choose to carry on with that behavior, then what I want you to do is to pick a spot and send them there. They'll stay there one minute per year of their age. You'll explain why, and then you'll receive an apology for their behavior. After explaining discipline to mum, she was able to apply the technique. Can you help me clean up the table? No, you just want you just want to play in the soap. When Mum expected Kara to clean up after lunch, she tried to escape into Mima's house. All she needs to do is get the fork and the spoon. No, 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 no. Come on. Are they ready? Get up. She's got to go to the step. Okay. I'm putting you on the step because you were not listening to me. So you're going to stay on here for four minutes, and I'm going to set the timer. And I would remove her passy as well, because that's her passy. No passy when you're on the step. Nothing. Mum did fine putting Kara on the naughty step, but she can't be afraid to speak authoritative, otherwise it's not going to work. 
This is Kara saying, I don't need to listen to you. Mm -hmm. Who's the parent who's in charge and who needs to show carer? If she doesn't make this distinction between when she's being serious and when she's having fun, then how is carer to know any different? It's just really no way for mum to show that she doesn't want that behaviour and she needs it to stop right now. She leave again. <sighs> no, I think I had to put Kara on the naughty spot about 40 times. So every time she comes back up here, what do you think she's going to do? Hi. Exactly. Mum just wasn't showing Kara that she meant business. So I decided to show her exactly how it should be done. OK, you're not carrying her down because she's big, girl, and that exhausts you because you have to carry her, taking her by the hand and you're bringing her down because you're not messing around. This is serious. OK, and she's misbehaving. And so I placed Kara in a naughty corner so she couldn't keep running up them steps. OK, set the alarm. And she'll do as she's told. Kara finally stayed in that spot for her four minutes, and now she definitely doesn't want to go back, so it definitely worked. Hey, are you sorry? OK, give me a hug. Next day, it was all about tackling Kara's passy issue. I believe that children shouldn't be using a passy past the age of two, and I know that most dentists would agree with me. This is what we're going to do. We are going to deal with these passies once and for all. <laughs> In the past, our failed attempts with Kara and the passy were not really Kara's fault. They were, I believe, Christy not wanting Kara to grow up. So we are going to have a passy hunt throughout the house. And we are going to put all the passies into this jar. And today, you are going to give up the passy because you don't need it anymore. You're a big girl. Let's see how many we can get each. I'm going to leave this in here. And we'll put them in there when we find them. Ready? I'm looking first. I know I'm off. Is that really looking? Well, where's your green I one? I got one. Go, go. Woo. OK, Mimo's looking. Uh, yeah. There you go. Go. Like, thanks. <laughs> go, go, go. Uh, so yeah. Take another cat here. I got two. There might be one in the car. Oh, look here, look, it's a blue one. Look. The thing is, is that parents get stuck in a rut and they give up too early. But if only they would look to dealing with this issue with a new approach, then they would resolve this situation. And I think that was the case with Kara's pacifier. So what we're going to do is we're going to put these in the trash can, we're going to throw them away. Putting them all in the jar and having Kara throw away the pacifiers was really neat. Over here, Elle. There she goes! Woo! I mean, I wanted him to go, so I was happy about that. It's fun to have no passies. Give me a big... <laughs> now you're a big girl! She threw the passies away, and she brought it up a couple of times, and then she moved on, and, you know, sometimes just, that's just how it is with kids. Resolving the situation with Kara and the Passy shows that if these parents choose not to sit back and accept the status quo, then things will change. And I wanted to use this momentum to stop these girls from drawing on those walls. Jo came up with a really neat idea. She had built three little frames, and in the frame there were big pieces of office paper. As you will see, each pad tears off and then just replace it. Now that I'd briefed Mum and Dad about how the drawing pads would work, it was time for them to explain it to the kids. Mum and Dad, do you want to explain what we've got? This is Ellie's pad of paper. That's Emma's pad of paper. And that last one is Kara's pad yeah. of paper. That's right. But guess what it's really for? See all that stuff on the wall? Well, this is to keep you girls from doing that. OK? And we don't want to see any more writing on the walls, all right? Where's the box of crayons? I'll go get it. <laughs> oh, there's crayons. Hey. Now with the wall murals, nobody will be writing on the wall anymore. And a little eyeball with little eyelashes and a big <laughs> smiley. The wall mural was a great success. However, I still need to tackle this family's biggest issue, and that's bedtime. And now Kara doesn't have a pacifier to soothe her Will it be drama? So tonight, there's a new bedtime routine. And the bedtime routine is going to be about you girls 
feeling very safe and secure in your own bedrooms. Where do I begin with bedtime? It's just insane, really. It's created such sleep deprivation that it's destructive to the whole family. In a couple of minutes, Kara is going to go and get washed, and she's going to have stories read to her. You girls are going to go and take a shower or a bath. Giving the girls a bedtime routine where it's staggered, so they all go to bed at different times, which allows the parents to wind them down and to read stories to them, just allows the whole process of bedtime to happen much smoother than what it was before. Aladdin and Abu gasped as they saw all the gold and jewels in the cavern. Can you lay down? Mm -hmm. I'm a sleep -waiter. No. She's not sleeping. <laughs> Sorry? She says she's going to sleep later. Oh, she did, did she? Mm -hmm. This is what you're going to do, OK? The stay in bed technique, OK? She comes out the first time. You say to her, it's bedtime, darling. Tuck her in and come out. The second time, you say it's just bedtime. The third time, you say nothing. Get up. <laughs> Good night, Kara. Then Mum placed Kara into bed and she came out straight away. And then it really was tantrums and tiaras. She didn't want to be going to bed on her own. <laughs> it's bedtime. She continued to cry, and Mum sat on the sofa. Her heart was just really feeling emotionally what Kara was going through. Tell me, tell yourself, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Uh, because it's well, it has to be done. Don't give me the answers that you've that you've memorised from listening to me. Really think about why we're doing this. I needed Mum's attention for her to focus on why it is important that these kids get to sleep and that she gets a good night's sleep as well. It's just not easy. No, it's not. But no, it's only change. No, it's not because she's going, oh, you're so mean, you're a mean mummy, you don't love me, you're abandoning me. That's not that cry. I was feeling very, very sad. I could never have done that without Joe there. With Kara already down, Dad put the other two girls to bed, and whilst I was talking to Mum, I realised that within an hour, all three were asleep. Oh, look at that. Your kids are in their own beds. You know, nine o'clock, and lights were out for everyone. Mum and Dad came downstairs and really didn't know what to do with themselves. I'm leaving for a couple of days. This is about you guys putting in the techniques and continuing, because soon I'm going to be going for good. So this is an important part of what we're doing here. I'm nervous about when Joe leaves that we'll resort back to our old ways. Uh -huh. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I knew that whilst I weren't around, that mum would really have to step it up. But this was the first time that I was going to be leaving mum and dad alone by themselves in eight years. Stay there and just hug one another, huh? <laughs> After three days away from the Shragi family, I was dying to see how they got on. OK, are we ready to take a look at this DVD? Yes. OK, so let's take a look then. Stop it or you're going to the naughty spot. <laughs> you stop. <laughs> Four minutes. Every time you get up, it gets longer. <laughs> Love it. Good job. Discipline is in the house. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> it's good that you recognise the steps, that you've got it underneath your belt. You're showing a good follow through. All right. Very, very good there. Now we're going <clears> to <throat> take a look at yourself, Christy, out with the girls for the afternoon. Yes. 
Ashley, come on and get Emma now. Worst day of my life. Can we go somewhere else? No. Oh, dear. You're taking them to the park, but you're not really getting engaged with them. You're standing on the edge. And I could see there was a disinterest. You were kind of on the side and didn't really want to have fun. You need to push through that. So let's take a look at the first clip of bedtime. Jump on in the bed. <laughs> Good night. Y'all will be OK. I just want somebody to shoot me. Why? I hate this. But it worked. It's bedtime. I'm out. That's it. I, I, I can't just sit up there listening to her scream, I love you, Mommy. <laughs> OK. You did a great beginning. Yeah. You tucked the kids in. It was great. And then you went, OK, I've had enough now. I'm done. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, who was going to step in? You had to step in. Because who else was going to do it? Let's take a look at the second clip here of bedtime. It's bedtime. OK, so when she said she wanted mummy, that's what you should give her. She'll give her mummy bedtime and take her back in. No. Oh, my word. No. All that hard work. You cannot compromise the technique. You cannot compromise it. Otherwise, it just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Doesn't work. <clears throat> and it didn't. But she does need you. She needs you to place her back. If it's not done by you, it does create the good cop, bad cop. Let's address bedtime once and for all. Right. OK? Let's continue to work with what is necessary so that we can tweak today the stuff that needs to be addressed with what we've seen on the DVD here. And uh, let's start now. Oh. OK. Good stuff. After seeing Christy so unengaged in the park, I just knew that I would have to deal with this constant issue. Christy, yeah. out with the girls? Sure. Three of them out. Let's have some fun. Uh, all of us. So I decided to take this family to the YMCA and give Christy a gentle nudge so she would learn how to enjoy herself with her kids. So let's pull out the inner child and let's enjoy it, yeah? yeah. All right. I could see that Christy was a little nervous and definitely out of her league. OK, how are we getting in here? <laughs> but I knew that once she got started, she'd have a whole heap of fun. Where are you lot? <laughs> I understand why Joe made me get in there and get involved. It was so the kids would know that I cared enough to give them my time and to play with them. It's about being a parent who actively engages with your children and shows them that you're interested in spending time with them, and that's what's happening here. Having fun with the kids allows them to burn energy productively, and at the same time, they're not going to be so clingy when it comes to bedtime. So we know that we need to do homework tonight with regards to the bedtime. The stakes are too high, let's face it. If you're not consistent with it, you're going to go downhill. Before I leave this house, I need to know you are strong enough to be able to commit to doing this bedtime technique. So, are you ready to put the kids to bed? Yeah. Whilst I was gone, Mum couldn't resist getting into bed with the little one, and it compromised the technique. So to move forward, I've got to make sure that Mum is totally committed to doing this. So what's happening tonight <laughs> with, with Carl? Carl's going to take a back seat, mm -hmm. OK, and do his thing. And tonight, you're taking charge of bedtime. Mm -hmm. 
I wanted mum to do this technique without Carl around because at the end of the day, mum is the one that's got to find the strength in putting these kids to bed and actively ignoring them. What would you wish for, asked Aladdin. I would wish for freedom, the genie replied. <laughs> Once the bedtime story was over, the tears and tantrums started, and it was really hard for mum just to pull herself away. <laughs> I may have been a little nervous having to do bedtime without Kyle, but I definitely saw the need for me to have to do it alone. OK, so this is what we are going to change about yourself right now. Stay right there. I want to show you your face. <laughs> so what are we going to do to change that? I guess I'm going to not look like that. You are on a mission. Get these kids into bed, mm -hmm. OK? Upright. You're going to get it done. When those kids come out, you're going to very firmly take them by the hand and you've got to take them back into the bedrooms. I think I needed that final push from Joe about bedtime. Kara was just like a little maniac. She was just running all over the room and zipping in and out. So it was a testing time for her. And it's not easy. There's no way it's easy for any parent. But it doesn't mean it's not right. It was hard. It's always hard hearing your child cry. I knew it was for the best. I knew that Emma was better off. As soon as Christy did step up and she was strong and persistent, these girls went off to sleep just like I knew they would. They're Safe. asleep. I did so good, I didn't even cry. Did you really? Mm -hmm. I was so excited to hear that Christy took charge at bedtime. To see her stand firm and to be the mother that these children needed to be is just so relieving. So, congratulations. You have clearly shown yourself. You are able and capable of doing it. Thank you so much for helping. Bedtime is the one thing I thought we might not be able to overcome. That's the one thing that I was most worried about, and I think we're on the road to overcoming it. So my work is done here. You sure? And your work is really just beginning. It's been a really intense time for the Shragi family, but I know that I've left them with tools and knowledge and techniques to help them along the right pathway of being positive parents. Very <laughs> big hug. Uh -huh. I definitely have a newfound confidence in my parenting skills. Well, because now I have some. Give me a hug, you. Thank you, Joe. We're so grateful that she came to see us, and our family is going to be so much stronger because of what she's done for us. Take care. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Joe, I thank you so much for helping our family. You. You have a tremendous gift, and you came in and saw where we needed help, and you helped us, and I thank you. I am a better parent now, but I'm still learning, and I will probably always be learning. But with Joe's techniques, we've got a good foundation. Ooh.